Good afternoon guys, hope everyone's doing really, really well. Happy weekend to everyone out there. And I'm reading the positive comments underneath my videos and it's so inspiring. And that's what gives me the edge and the inspiration to put more content onto my own YouTube. So thank you very much to all those that continue to support me and follow my journey. Um, you guys mean so much to me. Thank you very much guys, you know who you are. I haven't even got to mention our names, you know exactly who you are. And when it comes to um, negative comments and stuff like that, that's all good too. That's all good too. As long as comments are coming in, then that's all good to me. Um, and, you know, you've got to take the pros with the cons. And I don't really concentrate on negative people. So I just like slide by them and concentrate on positive people only, which are the people who are on my channel which support me from day one and have supported me and still continue support to support me. <clears throat> anyway, when I went on Sean's podcast, I did get one of the stories mixed up, admittedly, and um, I'm very, very sorry for that, and that was about Kenneth Noel. Now, just let me explain one thing. As someone said on my, um, underneath the comments, you know, uh, you know, this was my first podcast I'd ever done, and I was very um, nervous on that podcast, so when you're nervous, when I'm nervous, I talk quite a lot as you might be able to see. And, and yeah, it's quite easy to get the stories mixed up. But um, yeah, I was around Kenneth quite a lot in Whitemore. Um, we used to like all walk around the exercise yard together. Um, and I can, I've got plenty of people on YouTube to vouch for that. So I do know Kenny pretty well. And um, that's why I come out of that story and said he's pretty tight. He wouldn't even buy a bag of rice on the food boat that day. But yeah, um, just to clear that matter up, um, yeah, the police did um, jump over Kenneth's back garden. Um, I think it was in Elton or South East London, and I was all in black, hooded up, and um, Kenny's dogs obviously warned Kenny that there was intruders in his back garden, and that's when he went out and one of the um, officers got done. So, yes, he got a not guilty for that, um, but the police never ever forget things, and um, they had it in for him. So, yeah, he got a lump of bird for the brink smack, um, that's where we got our stories mixed up. And he got out on that Brinks Mac sentence, and um, th and that's when I see him when he got the um, the life sentence for the murder, which was on the M25, the road rage um, thing. So just to clear that matter up, guys. Well, anyway, that's that matter cleared up. I, um, <clears throat> I hope he's cleared that matter up. Anyway, guys, so I want to have a little chat with you about um, a festival which I went to called Glastonbury, and that was. Um, 2005 when I just got out of prison so we all went to Glastonbury there was about 10 of us or about 12 of us maybe even more and um, at Glastonbury it's you've got perimeter fences right around the outside of it and it's on a it's, the, the festival is on a field in the middle so, and back in the day the farmers would literally let you um, park your car in their back garden and let you jump over the fence so that's what we used to do so this time, which I'm going to talk to you guys about, um, a big fight broke out. We was off of our nuts on, I can't really mention it on here because I don't want to get a strike, <clears throat> but you can imagine what we was on. And it weren't the down stuff, it was up the up stuff. So yeah, it was up for two or three days. And um, anyway, we was all in this um, big marquee, loads of us like raving, rocking, and the music was going, we was off our nuts, and a big massive fight broke out. And um, the fight broke out, and they looked like Saxons, they were like six foot five, all like henchmen. And um, they all said, right, where's the bloke with the tattoo on the face? Where's the bloke with the tattoo on the face? The reason why they wanted me was because I stopped on the way up to Glastonbury and bought a candle and I was melting the candle um, and putting it into cling film and I was selling that as you know what. So yeah, I, um, I made quite a few quid there. I know it's the wrong thing to do, but that's what it was like back in the day. I uh, made quite a, quite a few quid there, probably around about a thousand pound. And um, later on that evening, that is when um, all these like Vikings and Saxons and big blokes, like they they clocked me, they see me in this big marquee, um, raving and dancing. And yeah, I got a few punches. Um, I had a little fight back, but um, I, I wiggled my way out of it and got away from it. And um, <clears throat> it was it was massive, like the whole marquee. So I bolted. I got out. And don't forget what I said to you, I parked my car in one of the um, farmer's back gardens. So, I'm running through these fields, and this is the second day. So I'm running through these fields, I'm searching for my car, but the perimeter of the fence on the outside is so big, it's probably about 30 miles right the way around. 
and um, I couldn't find my car. And I, I got to the train station and all my wallet, all my phone was in my car, I didn't have no money. I got to Glastonbury train station and there was all police on the platform. I thought, oh my God, I'm off my face. I'm, uh, I've got to get home, but I haven't got no money. So I jumped over the fence uh, at the back of the train station um, and got on the train, got back to London. And the next day, the very next day, bearing in mind my car was still up there, the very next day my cousin phoned me up and he said, uh, he said Joe, where are you? Because he, he, he thought I was still in, like, in Glastonbury. And I said, oh, I'm back in London. And he said, you idiot, you idiot, we're at your car. So they was waiting for me at the car. So I had to uh, leave London. And that was the third day now. I had to leave London and uh, go back to Glastonbury to pick my car up. And that, that's a good, that's a true story. But I'll tell you what, once you go to one of them festivals, them big raves, it's, it's a life, it, you never, ever forget it. Um, it is so good there. But back in the day, that's, that's what... That's what went on, you know. Um, we did what we did to get a few quid, but I wouldn't do it nowadays. And I'm not saying like anyone should be doing it, but um, it was really, really, really a good time there. And, and I regret selling the candle wax, as you know what. Um, but you know, I was there for two days and um, had a really, really good time. So, anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave this one here. I did say to you, like. On previous videos, like I've got new content and I'll be uploading. I'll be uploading daily content um, every day and on a di on a different story. So I wonder what is happening with the uh, Decker fight and the Dean Lynch ward. The last time I heard anything, uh, Decker was in a hotel room doing a podcast and talking about, you know, he um, tried to do away with himself three times in one week. He went to a bridge and was going to ump Jay over the bridge, but he didn't, and he put a pair of shoes there instead. That was an absolute joke. I was laughing my head off, to be honest with you, at the video. What a joke. You know, you just wouldn't expect something like that um, coming off of a man, out of a man from um, someone like him, considering he can fight for England, he's all his nails, but it just goes to show you. See these fists there? Or these fists there? You can't talk with these fists no more. Um... It's all about what's in your brain. And I believe that he's been mentally broken down before the fight even happened. So that's going to be dangerous, to be honest with you, for, for Dean. Because, you know, Dean's going in there, you know, um, with bad intention. And so is Decker. He's going into it with bad intention too. And that could make a very, very, very dangerous, dangerous fight. So I'd like to see uh, the fight. I definitely won't be paying for it and um, it'll be on YouTube sooner or later. But if anyone um, if anyone knows any more about the fight, uh, drop me a PM in the comments or comment underneath and let me know and um, we go from there, guys. But whatever you're doing, stay safe. Have a great weekend. The sun's out. Peace.